to Xanadu. I would have liked to have seen the strangers, but instead I got to look for lizards. Yeah. Do you see anything that looks like a timing crystal? Yeah, right here behind the, behind the control panel. It's filthy. Right, we're supposed to scrape off this black moldy stuff. Weird. Just following instructions. Here we go. Yeah. C9. I mean 10. 10 -adoo. Hey, how you doing, Xanadu? Xanadufus? Look up. They scratch off all that stuff on there. Just clean that right off. Come on. Hey, Xanadu. Hey, look at that. You're not all upside down and everything. You look a lot better. Let me clean off your little wander. Eh. At end of road. Which road? Yes, there's a house. With bricks. You are standing at an end of a road before a small brick building. Around you is a forest. Chan, check out the building. Enter building. Inside building. This is spooky. You're inside a building. A sword shed for National Park Services. Oh, okay. There is a sensible modern ele electric lantern nearby. <laughs> That's boring. Go back to the forest. Okay. Exit building. Enter forest. That is not something you can enter. Just type a direction. North. In forest. Bad programming. We are in open forest with a deep valley to one side. Can we climb a tree? Climb tree. I don't think much is to be achieved by that. Sorry. Can we dig a hole? Dig a hole can't see any such thing. Pretty limited vocabulary. South. You're in a forest. Hey, it's a maze. Uh oh. Keep going south. You're in a forest. Lula is here. Soldering replacement components in a small, handmade radio. Oh, we should talk to her. Ask Lula how she is doing. Hi, Donald. I'm getting the strangest interference out here. I've been tuning the radio circuits gradually as we go, swapping capacitor values and tweaking resistor networks. It was working for a while, but everything I can pick up sounds so distant muffled. Lula hands you the radio. Well, maybe you'll have better luck. You're good at this stuff. Just don't forget to give it back. South. You're in forest. Is here, tapping with small stylus. Joseph is here. A modified pocket rail slate. A small gray kitten, no more than a few weeks old, dozes comfortably on top of his backpack. Maybe he has something to say. Listen. Donald, I was just transcribing your footsteps. Sounded like... 
Runs his finger along the index card he's been tapping on, from right to left. Long, weary song. Drearily gone. Dre dearly, dearly gone. You beat a me melancholy shuffle through these woods, Donald. Heh. <laughs> I've been noting down the sounds in this forest, with an ear for speech and an inborn filter for poetry, I suppose. So maybe it's me being melancholy after all. I'm eager to see what the poetics subsystem makes of these punched cards. South. At edge of hole. You're at the edge of massive hole. The dirt gives way to rock as the ground seeks into darkness. The computer tied to your upper back slickens with sweat in the afternoon sun. The rope, slings, the rope slung around your shoulder has slipped under the strap of your backpack, digging up comfortably into your collarbone. <laughs> Lean in a bit and check it out. Down. The cave walls are too slick to climb safely without assistance. You lose your footing and you fall to your death. Ah, oh, shit. eaten by a gravity. 8192. Interesting. It's the same number on those things. What? You may continue or quit. Continue. Yell into the first hole to see if they're pirates. Yell. I understand you as far as wanting you to yell. Yell. Any pirates down there? No response. <laughs> Sorry, kids, you're batting zero today. At least we know there's no pirates. Try using the rope to climb down safely. Tie rope to tree. Rope is tied snugly to a tree trunk. Down. Feet slip a few times on the rock, but you remain stable. Lula and Joseph descend carefully after you. In bed quilt. This is a fancy computer system. You're in bed quilt, a long east-west passage with holes everywhere. Hmm. Joseph and Lula removes the computer equipment they are carrying on their backs and begin setting up. Lula, that's the last trip. Every so everything down here is now. Set up the gear. Set up gear. I only stood you as far as you wanted. Set up the above. Set up. Set the up above. Set the up above? Lula looks pensive. Ask her where the treasure is. Ask Lula where the treasure is. Huh, if I knew that, we wouldn't have set up down here. You know, I think this environment will help our project. Get us in touch with a deep romantic re revenance for some kind of profound natural spookiness. I was more comfortable in our lab. University picked the worst time to cut our funding. Typical... Oh, I didn't get the lantern. Shit. Institutional stinginess and academic politics. I mean, I felt they were getting really close to something. Something. Anyway, I don't know if it's sustainable down here. You know, live and work here together. Ask her about the cave. Ask Lulu about cave. Having second thoughts? I don't blame you. It's unsettling down here. Weird acoustics. Earlier, as we were climbing down, I thought I heard voices for a moment. More echoes. Singing. Tuneless working song. I'm glad I'm not down here alone. Joseph looks uncomfortable. Jealous. Hey, Donald, can you help me with, uh, wire these up these generators? I'll assemble the synthesizer, but I could use some help with these serial interface if you have time. You can hear an unfamiliar echo from the tunnel to the east. Maybe if we help Lula, we'll have more, she'll have more to tell her. Or us. Help Lula. Thanks, Donald. I can never remember which color lead goes to which pin. Lula begins unpacking a box of wires and terminals. Do you think there are paintings down here? Cave paintings. I mean, some old poetry shards. When the world was young and early men and women huddled in these caves to 
You know, I think cultural fossils are the saddest fossils. Sadder than any animal remains. I mean, when I come across a petrified mollusk or a partial dinosaur poop and say, there was a point of contact here where a body touched the earth. Maybe there was a little bit of evidential garbage, but the life who owned that body never cared and has moved on anyway. And that's the end of it. But suppose I shine my lantern on one of those walls, and I see a crude painting, thousands of years old, two men and a woman, charcoal and blood, on rock. Someone put that there, to keep something on rock after she passed, a hope, a relationship, or a moment, a worry, maybe a regret. She made a painting to keep something alive for her, but like that dead mollusk and that itinerant dinosaur, she had to move on. Whatever it was is gone, and now we're looking at this painting, this dangling copy with no original. You are interrupted by the ominous echo of a grating, scraping sound from the east, louder than before. What the hell is that? Let's check it out. In tunnels. Rush down the tunnel with Joseph and Lula close behind. How do you like all this, kid? Kind of boring, but I like boring bucks stuff sometimes. There's a lot of reading, but I'm good at that anyway. The tunnel narrows, and soon you find yourself crawling on your hands and knees. Navigating the tunnel gradually becomes more awkward. The smooth rock gives away to jagged, crystalline surfaces. Scratches and taps echo from the edge of the tunnel. Some short and piercing, some slower and groaning as if dampened by water. The tunnel opens up into a large room. In Crystal Room. Oh. Hey. You kind of remind me of my skeleton, like... You're in a large, irregular chamber. The walls, floors, and ceiling are covered with crystalline projections. Strange as you hear, scraping black mold from the crystals. They look up when you enter. One of them seems about to speak. Finally! Listen to what he says. The stranger reaches for a box he's carrying and presses a plastic button. The box wears a life, and a crackly voice blurts something unintelligible, and then slows to a deep gurgle. He looks at his companions, momentarily in confused disappointment. Then he returns his awful gaze to you. Joseph flees through the tunnel to the north. God damn it, Joseph. Lula flees his through a tunnel in the northeast. Uh, follow Joseph. He's like blind or something. Run northeast. Joseph scrambles around the outcrops of crystal as you struggle to follow him in the dark. He calls back breathlessly. What? What happened to Lula? Lula, are you back here? Hmm. All right, you're good. Look for Lula. You can't see any such thing. Donald, you have to find her. Make sure you find her. Joseph climbs through the cave and into the darkness. Look for Lula. You can't find a th anything. Uh, the strangers return to their work, scraping the crystals. There is no sign of Lula now. You should leave. Hmm. Back in bed quilt. Cool. Long East must pass through the Joseph is here, panning for breath. Damn, did they follow us? Where's Lula? He seems pretty scared. Reassure Joseph. Hell with you. I told you to find her, you son of... Enough, this is where she'll go, right? We'll wait for her here. She'll be okay. She's tougher than either of us. Search for her. Search. I only understand as far as you wanting to search. If you're more specific. With the equipment... Search equipment. The various computer and audio equipment cast angular shadows into the tunnels as you scan slowly across the file. Nothing. Yeah, I don't know where the party went. These things happen. Hi, Phoenix. Uh, down one of the tunnels. Search tunnel. You select tunnel at random. Your lantern illuminates several sets of footprints in the Mulder Cave orb, but they're impossible to identify. We will climb sound from the rope, still tied above. Oh! Hello, Lula. 
it's still tied above. Is it you or more shadows? Lula advances carefully. It really is you, isn't it? I got lost out there in the tunnels. For a while I thought I was running in circles, like some kind of labyrinth. Every rocky wall and floor looked the same. Finally, I ended up here. I hid out for a bit, waiting for you. I heard voices, but I wasn't sure. Not after what I've seen. While I was out there, I... I spent some time on the Zero. What? Why? Joseph, it's... It's different than we've heard. It's like a real place. They've picked up garbage. They deliver mail. They go to work and to church. My most vivid memory is a parade of images. Like a walking dream or a slide lecture I'd never understand. A television. A scarecrow. A crystal. A feather. A sandwich. A CRT monitor. A botter. An anchor. Joseph seems agitated. We should ask her more about it. Ask Lulu about the Zero. It's calling to me, Donald. It seems important. Important? It's... It doesn't matter now, damn it. I'm leaving. To hell with all of it. Get him back on track. We're so close. Divert Joseph's attention. You shot something in Joseph about the project you were working on together. You'll die in those dull, cold, damn caves. And what about those men? You know they'll come back. Tell him we can find somewhere to start a fire. So just finding somewhere safe to start a fire. You shot something at Joseph about going deeper into the caves. Do you hear their voices? They're not... They'll find you, but not me. I'm going back to the surface. Stop, your stupid fight is ringing through the whole damn cave. Joseph is right, we can't stay here. I'm leaving too, but I'm not going back to the surface. I'm taking my station wagging, I'm heading down to the zero. If we need to stay, ask Lula to stay. You plead with Lula about your continued collaboration. Hey, you time. I'll send you this tape when I'm done recording. I'll put it in the mail, and then you'll see what your damn machine does with it. Lula and Joseph have left. Shit. Abandoned by your collaborators, your confidants, your companions, the only two among you of your colleagues who have ever trusted to give of your gift of your trend. Is it? Pretty thick. It sounds like a beardo has his heart broken. You wander the tunnels alone, dragging along the components of your unrealized masterpiece, combing the underground passages for a new site to which really realize your vision. Turn on. Sounds like a genius. How do you mean? Hmm. Vain. Vanity. Ain't it the truth? My aunt Remedi Remed Remedios, before she got into the whole ethnomusic ethnomusicography thing. She was a partner. Painter. Mostly nudes and oil. She had this model. I'll never forget him. Big, classically physical guy. Looked like he was about to storm Troy. He made everyone call him the Colonel. Weaver and I saw this guy naked a lot. You couldn't help it. He was always posing somewhere in the house, chasing the light from the room while Aunt Remed Remedios made a sketch of his profile and worked out the right mix of pigments for his abdomen. Colonel had his had this magnificent hair, long black hair that ran down just to the bottom of his shoulder blades. One evening, he was standing next to an open window in the back of the house. The sun was setting. Early spring, I think. It was kind of windy. Aunt Remedios was trying to get his hair right. She kept arranging it, like half in front and half behind, running over his shoulder and laying across the chest in this very specific way. But it or something, and he'd do this weird, indignant shuffle thing, or the wind from the open window was put, would push it around. Or he'd start to turn his neck, and Weaver and I ran by. Everything would be tangled again. The final product was a swirl of back lines, billowing around the... I fucked up. All the Mountain King. Oh. That's weird. Hmm. After what may have been years, you stumble out of a tunnel into a ca cavernous open space. Stalactite, stalactites adorn the ceiling like grotesques. In the center of the room is an enormous rocky spire. This is where you set up your equipment and establish your legacy. Hmm. Oh, Xanadu. Whoa. Now is the time to continue your work. Research Assistance, 0. Realism Index, 37%. Romance Index, 2%. Mold Coverage, 
You may hire a new research assistant, assign assistants to a task, or sleep until tomorrow. Hmm. Hire a new research assistant. Hire. Uploading job advertisement to university message boards. You have hired Andrew, who studies statistics. Assign assistants to a task. You must assign research assistants to read debugging, de transcription, or speculation. Andrew. He does statistics. He was... Andrew was the, uh... Speculate... The speculative guy. Speculation. Hire a new research assistant. Uploading job advertisements. No new applicants. Sleep. Andrew posits that nature, not reason, it is the master of industry. Now it is time to re continue your work. Old coverage, 8%. Romance index, romance index 70, 17. I are new. I hired Amy, who studies human computer interaction. Sign. I'm doing what he tried to do, but in a simulated thing. Amy. Amy was the was like the erotic novelist. And you do to write things. Transcription. Just one. And another to debugging. I knew. All right. Sleep. Time passes. Andrew identifies a bug within with the oxygen level simulation, but is unable to fix it. Amy types up some lurid imagery from a dream journal. Greasy black mold is correcting on the computer equipment. Now is the time to continue your work. Hmm. Realism index is getting lower. Can't have that. Alright, hire new. Weaver! Weaver! Who studies mathematics. Alright. Interesting. I'm assuming I'm assigning Weaver, so I need I need Weaver to do debugging. One. And then transcription. One. I guess it doesn't matter who does it. Speculation. Sleep. Time passes. Andrew makes adjustments to the ecological algorithm. Bats now fly normally instead of getting hung up on each other's wings and clustering together like horrible leather tumbleweeds. And he extensively notates tunnel diameter as a function of length. Intruders! The strangers are doing something to the equipment, but you can't make out what. You hide behind a rock until they leave. Oh god. This trepidation emerged from your hiding places hours later. Now is the time to continue your work. I'm not convinced this is getting any else closer to the zero. Hmm. That's understandable. Old coverage is at zero. I seem to do that, and also 42%. Let's hire a new guy. Roberta. Fairy tales. Try to quit and start over. Nah. Alright, speculation. One. Debugging. Two. Transcription. Alright. Can I hire another? Sleep. Time passes. Roberta widens tunnels slightly to reduce the need for extra crouch commands. Amy fixes some weird math with some weirder math. Andrew summarizes migra migratory patterns of bats through tunnels. Weaver discards centuries of exhaustive data on the uniformly uniformity of cause and effect. 
Weaver follows, follows the strangers into the tunnels. She doesn't return, but neither do they. Weaver, no! Shit. That's bad. Hire. Hired Greg. Architecture. Poor, poor Weaver. Put one on debugging. Two to transcription. Sorry, two. Speculation. Sleep. Gray fixed bugs. Amy carefully transcribed the sounds of dripping water and all their variations over a period of several hours. And she's transcribed experiences. Roberta makes convincing argument for the edibility of stone. Increase black mold is collecting on the computer equipment. Now's the time to continue your work. You should try to start over reducing. This doesn't seem to be helping. What are you talking about? We're at un almost 100% realism. Be fine. Hard Rick. Alright. I need to have three on debugging. And then one on transcription. And then one on speculation. Sleep. Andrew fixed bugs. Rich fixed bugs. Greg fixed bugs. Roberta transcribed experiences. Amy had ideas. A mail carrier on bicycle brings you a sizable bill from the power company. Now it is time to continue your work. 100%. Alright. Hire new research. Marianne studies fine art. Alright. One person to debugging. Just one. Assistance to a task. Transcription. Three. And... Two on speculation. Sleep. Amy fixed bugs. Marianne transcribed experiences. Rick transcribed experiences. Roberta transcribed experiences. Andrew had ideas. Greg had induced. Intruders! Shit. Change is doing something to the equipment. We can't make out what. You have behind rocks and leave. Let's trepidation emerge. They get rid of their mold for some reason. Well, no one's dead yet, so I'll just hire another one. University investor doors have been disconnected. It's fine. Whatever. One on debugging. Transcription. Three on transcription. Two on speculation. Sleep. You prepare a nutritional meal of boiled cave moss, seasonal with the salty, translucent paste you've harvested at great personal risk from stalactites. I bet. A lot more mold coverage. Can I hire anyone? Ah, shit. Assign assistance to a task. One to debugging. I'll put two to that. And three to speculation. Oh, shit. Try and quit. Okay, okay, sure, we can keep playing. Okay, good. I was afraid I'd almost... Sorry. Okay, sleep. Marianne fixed bugs. Experiences. Ideas. 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 Freeze black mold. Oh. I'm almost at 100%. Assign assistance to a task. 
I need two underbugging. Two on transcription. Two on speculation. Sleep. Bugs, bugs, experiences, experiences, ideas, ideas, ideas. You dream fitfully. You, Lula, and Joseph stand in the hallway. The walls are blank beige. It's been after. It's it's just after winter quarter, before string, so there are no studies or students around. Joseph says something clever, and Lula leans on his shoulder. That's right, they were lovers. We wish that instead she had taken your hand, or that there were any other option. Now it's time to continue your work. All right. I'm at 100%. Assign assistance. Two. Two. I'm guessing when the guys come around, it'll go back to zero and then I'll win. Two. Sleep. Bugs, bugs, experiences, experiences. Ideas, ideas. Your habit of absentmindedly chipping away at a cave crystals and sprinkling their dust in the air behind you has paid off. There's a few feet down from one of the tunnels bloom a small and but kaleidoscopic garden of crystals. Now's the time to continue. 100%. I don't think I can hire anyone new. Nope. I'll just keep going. Oops, speculation. Okay, two. Transcription. Two. Sleep. Rich bugs, experiences, experiences, ideas, ideas. Intruders! Finally, they leave. Now's the time to continue your work. Bring in intruders. Realism index, 97. 100%. Zero. Shit. I hire any reason? I so close. Hmm. Two. 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 Wait, ah, fuck it. Do ideas make that stuff? I'm thinking it does, maybe? Let me try something. I'm thinking mold coverage is added by speculation. So I'm gonna put three on debugging, and then three on transcription. And then sleep. Bugs, 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 experiences, experiences, experiences. Now time to continue. Ah, oh, no, it doesn't. Weird. It just goes up every day. Hmm. I need to really try to keep this up. Weird. If they show up tomorrow, then it should be 100, 100, and 0. That's what I'm thinking I need to do.
طيب Curtis finally they leave 100 100 zero it I did it what do I do do I have to try to keep them away Weird. I'll just try doing it again. Shit, I did it wrong. Oh, I fucked up. Yeah, I don't know, Thala. Bugs are fixed. Mm -hmm. It has been hours. It's a pretty long act. Sleep. Fuck it. Research assistants come and go, but you don't encounter the strangers again. Sometimes you can hear the uncanny echoes of their voices off in the tunnels. Years pass. Mold accumulates. You and the remaining research assistants take to burning disused equipment in the center of the room. The black mold is intensely flammable and makes an excellent catalyst. Please find a sweet, narcotic perfume. Tonight you have visitors, outsiders, different ones. Then later that night, an old friend. You really did go deeper into the caves. Premature end of life. Press any key to quit. Hmm. Huh. Donald, what are you doing? What are you doing over there, Donald? Lula! You really did go deeper into the caves. Well, you were easy enough to find. I've met a few of your former assistants. One can help but hear a few things. So, this is what has become of our project. Oh, there's Lula. Over there. Oh, I made a f some additions. Joseph stole the data tapes for the first half, so I've had some blank spots to spill. Yes, I know. He published his version, actually. I'm sorry to report that it's a bit tediously sentimental. We found your doctor. Oh, good, yes. You're looking not well, to be honest. You smell like a distillery. Have you been drinking? <laughs> that, not really. I mean... No, I haven't, actually. We've been looking for you. So you found the address data. Just pass it over to Donald here. Donald, will you be a deer and crunch those numbers? We're looking for a sort of street name collision. Dogwood Drive. How long does this take? Should only be an hour or so. Andrew will carry it over to... I'll be over at the Bureau for the rest of the night. Just mark it at private materials for attention of Senior Clerk Chamberlain. How do we get the Bureau from here? The bridge! Yes, the bridge. Through the gate over there. Uh, Donald, sentimental. Now we too recede into history. Good to... Good night, Donald. Shannon, meet me at the bureau. We'll get you on your way. Head counterclockwise to the cathode ray, then burn, then turn around. Then it's just clockwise until you find the bureau. Between us, I think you should drive. Yeah, I agree. Fancy seeing you here. Not Roberta. Where are you going? Over here. Okay, goodbye.
Gate is open. It sure is. Goodbye, Xanadu. You're a good computer. Hey, it's the ghost singers again. Alright. Someone has left a portable tape recorder on the path. It doesn't appear damaged. There's no tape. The bookshelf was carried part land only part way up the path here before the project was abandoned. A lantern. Modern electric lantern has been left here. The batteries have long since died. Hey, blue. Hey, guy that we left here. Sorry. I guess you weren't allowed to come along. Thanks for waiting, blue. We were gone a bit longer than expected. I mean, what have you been doing? Sleeping a bit. Take it if you can get it. Yeah. Hey, Johnny. What happened up there? I'm actually... I'm actually not sure. Very mysterious, ma'am. Yeah. But we found Lula. And now I can get God... Almost get Dogwood Drive. A mysterious place. Spooky. Alright, so I need to head counterclockwise until I reach the thing, right? Head counterclockwise to the cathode ray. Not there. Hey, there it is. And then we go back. So yeah, this is a weird place, this thing. It's very easy to get lost. It's kind of hard and di difficult to, undo, to, to explain, you know. There's a feather. The cactus. The antlers. I want the bureau. Hey, there it is. It's exactly where I need to be. Hey, this place again. Hey, robot lady. I have a robot leg. Hey, you see that cat over there? Think she needs some bread? Nah, well, more than you for you, Blue. Yeah. Hey, you sent. You missed craziness. Let's go to reception. Also, you changed your look. Ding dong. Hey, Lula. What are you doing down here? Here you are. Marianne is the rest of the evening off. I'm sure you might. So I'm not minding the desk. Not minding? So I'm minding the desk. Yeah. <laughs> Your word on the address. 
The results just came by in the courier. Good news, Donald and his assistants were able to sort through the noise. I had Rick Croft reference their results against some of our records. He found a corresponding mail stop on the Echo River route. As it happens, the night ferry is scheduled to make it stop here shortly. The ferryman carries the mail and collects the garbage as well. I'm sure you can catch a ride out that way. You're welcome to right here. Um, you have to go back to packing. You're going somewhere. I might. I'm feeling impulsive, and I'd and I'd like to be ready. Maybe back to Mexico. It's been years. I still have one of my sculptures in a museum down there. Did you know? Big ugly iron thing. I have it scrapped anyway. Safe travels and true. Try to stay out of the water. It's colder than it looks and deep. All right. Yeah. Chat couldn't handle the weirdness that was Xanadu. Just too weird. There's an invisible wall here. I don't like it. Mm. Fine. Stay out of the water. Oh, guess we wait. Didn't want us to talk to Lula, huh? Bone leg. How long do we have to wait? Oh, who knows. Alright, what happened? Mm, Conway, up to you. It's okay, you can tell them. Doesn't matter anymore. Fine. So, we were in that graveyard. Ooh, sorry. Act 13. Where did the strangers come from? Oh man, we get to see what was going on over there. We didn't find any lizards. Well, this can't be right. Looks like a church. It's muddy. Yep. I want to stay outside. Okay. I'll stay with him. We can look for lizards. Okay, we'll make it quick. Let's go to the church. Alright, now I can finally see what's going on in here. The church floor is cold metal, scuffed by flex, and flexed by unknown boot heels. There's a still. Handmade apparatus for the production of moonshine, assembled by scavenged metal and natural materials. Huh. I guess we'll sit. I don't know what I expected. The strangers, he kept saying. Kind of vague already, isn't it? Donald's a stranger. Hell, you and I are practically strangers. Listen, earlier in the mine, I didn't want to talk to it, talk about it, but... Oh, wait, that long ago in the mine. But I saw Weaver. She was on TV. It was testing a pretty simple tube repair, flipping through the channels to check the saturation. She was just... there. It's kind of horrible, I mean... I told you she disappeared suddenly, ran away, but we thought... What was she doing on TV? That's the part I can't... I flipped past the channel a dozen times before my tests. That was one of those public access things, some old lady reading poetry. And the next time I flipped to channel 2, Weaver. It's buried in my vision now, it's she's standing in a room, the walls are blank, kind of gray. There's tape on the walls, like markings, and desks. Classroom, maybe? Cameras in the corners of this kind of 45-degree angle into the room, and there's Weaver right in the center of the picture. I stopped turning the dial, and... Hell, I think I stopped breathing. Eventually, she spoke, but there was no real sound, just this awful hum. I read the closed captions. She said to go to the mine. I'd find something there. I can't remember exact words. Whenever I try, I get distracted. Fuzzy, I... Shannon coughs into her sleep. It's so dusty in here, right? Yeah, real dusty. I think with all these holes in the ceiling. What the hell was that? Did you hear that? Eh, must have been church settling. Must set. Oh shit.
Hello, skeleton man. I have a skeleton leg. Shannon is going to be frozen in fear. Well, let's just talk to him normally. Oh! He Hello, I am now a skeletal man. The stranger activates a tape player song on his shoulder. A crackly drawl enters the room. It is patient. It sounds like it should be smiling. Do little. I regret. I hope I didn't keep you waiting long. We don't see a lot of foot traffic these days. I guess you hear about the job. I'm afraid we only have one opening at the moment. Horrible business. Actually, we're looking for some information about an old computer. Certainly, I can tell you everything you will need to know. I've only just met you, but I feel there's a certain place for you here. I'll take you over to, dis to the dispatcher. Service door. Huh. Show you the trucks. Get you familiarized. We can converse as we go. What is this place? I mean, Shannon to Conway. What is this place? Well, it's not an old church. No, no, I guess not. But still, it has a kind of reverence to it. What's that smell? Like baking bread? Please, follow me. Oh, shit, I can degoss him. Alright, I'll follow you. Huh. There's people here. I have to ask you to step in here a moment. This is for your safety, and to adjust your outfits a bit. There's some protective headwear up in the wall back there. Please remove your shoes and eyeglasses. We don't wear glasses. So, that won't be an issue. Well, do us a favor and put on the headwear anyway. Just be just this way. <laughs> oh man, we look like dapper workers. I don't want to degoss this guy. He hasn't been mean. I have a feeling that'll just like kill me and my leg. Like, the leg and I are the same, so I can't degoss me. It'd be really bad right now. More new arrivals this evening. Plenty to do, gotta relay the formula. We actually just need to ask you about a computer. Hmm? No, the orientation is all done by voice and rote. We don't believe our electronics have a role in our company culture. Computers are tools. Plenty of interesting mechanical this and that ahead, though. Shall we move on? God damn it. They only have preconceived notions. Wow, check that stuff out. It must be decades old, but it's in perfect condition. You really like old electronics. Yeah, I've got it bad. Ha ha. That's why I got into this business. To keep old stuff like this running. Seems like such a shame to let it fall into ruin, you know? Like the computer back in the cave. Xanadu. Decades of engineering. Thousands of years of mathematics and philosophy. All petrified in the living stone. How could you just let that fall apart? It is living stone, you're right. Or just, you know, stone. I think I'm out of the uh, options and I gotta degoss this guy. But I feel like bad things will happen. And bad things can happen. Oh god. Hey. 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 I made them, like, super bright. Holy shit. Hey, Earl. This is Earl. He used to be a beekeeper. Borrowed some used casks before the hives, but the, inter but the interest accrued more quickly than the honey. Now he works for us here in logistics. Oh, using that lets me see him. But, uh, don't really help much. Hmm. That's a nice truck. Better than our truck. It's 
So. So. Oh, okay. Oh man, look at these things. These are cool. happening. No, Conway's not a skeleton. Conway's just following. This is some weird skeleton guy that I take control of because the game's weird like that. But, uh, I'm stuck here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, see, there's Conway. He's following. Just for some reason I'm controlling this guy. I guess we'll get on this thing. Too little. Here's the fleet. Haha. -ha. Oh, we use one of the... Oh, we just use these to get around internally. What do you do here? Oh, I'm a copywriter. Text on bottles and flyers. Ad copy, that sort of thing. The turning shades of heart sink lovers have known taste of hard times and held it in favors and all of their other spirits was one of mine. So the trucks are just east of ways and shipping. You can come acquainted with the dispatcher here. You mean the tap of the shoulder if you see something that catches your eye. We're always happy to show off the facilities sublime. Oh man, I get to drive. Ah, cool. I guess we're in logistics. Hey, mate. Uh, I guess I can't go over there. Yeah, this is awesome. There's shipping over there. So this is all happening while I was... What's his name? It's amazing. While I was looking for lizards in a cemetery. Quarters. This is a strange place. Thought you'd like to see the accommodations. We supply what bedding we can according to the formula. What formula? Eh? Oh, the formula. Changed our lives. Once years ago, we were part. We were as prisoners to the intricacies of our debts here. We have to account for everything on paper. Compounding interest by hand, re reassessing authorization, and leveraging d asset distributions according to a nightly merit decay. Then she stepped out of the dark caves, showed us the light of the formula. She had brilliant grasp of the mathematics, and saint-like way of speaking right through the numbers. I know who it is. It's gonna be... It's gonna be Weaver. She disappeared when I was, when I was doing... The Xanadu thing. She disappeared. The Xanadu thing was just retelling history. Right up to the present. <sighs> How many people work here? Oh, about 30, 40. Something like that. Some of us count for more than others. Myself, I'm focused. Well, shouldn't I be? I've got this figure to pay down. The longer I sleep, the more interest accrues. Just in to sleep your feet and worry like that. Of course, as a delivery diver, you'd be able to come and go a little. Your time pretty closely. And you can still roll the window down. Maybe glimpse a familiar silhouette on the side of the road as you pass. Yeah. I have a bone leg. Wait. Thanks. Feel a lot better. There's stuff over there, but I can't enjoy it. I think I move faster when I use the degauzer. Well, there were the quadas. I'm 
That's all. I'm a good driver. There's a bunch of people here. They're faded. I will help. Bleh. Dennis. Dennis, we love Dennis, truly, but Dennis cost us all a great deal in time and money. You see, many years ago, it continues to sting. His family owned a lodging, logging company once. They accidentally floated an uninspected log infested termites on the river and ended up in our yard and spread to our spread its pestilence. Devastation. We didn't catch it until the porous casks have already been filled. The great warehouse spillage disaster, we still call it. Yes, Dennis will be here for a while. Though. Lucky he's, he's such an agreeable fellow. This is like a penitentiary. Nancy. Val, 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 Leah. Leah's good people. <laughs> Used to run a magazine. Paid writers by the word and ended up with few flowery attractive in the red. Hard times and cosine alone, quarter digest, but it sank. Doesn't talk much now. What about Jermaine? Was a bicycle courier. Until quite recently, he sadly even misplaced some money orders en route to a boiler maintenance company and was held liable. With it, distillery bought the company, and debt came along with it. These are all people that have failed businesses experience. What about Ruben? Ruben here was a serial entrepreneur. Do you know what that is? He created and sold a bunch of businesses, one after another. Creative bookkeeping caught up with him, and he had to borrow against some empty promises to keep his licenses intact. Now he's here, in shipping. What about Rawl? This is Rawl, our mass, our young prodigy. Rawl has been being groomed for the master to tiller. The distillery paid tuition for his chemistry degree, and in exchange, he is here serving out an apprenticeship, and shall be for many years, I expect. Sorry to hear that. Ah, oh, dude, I want food. It may not be a draw on its own, but the food is certainly passable. Most of us never leave the premises anyway. What do they serve? I'm really hungry. Oh, well, mostly corn. One acquires a taste for local dishes as one does anywhere. It doesn't matter for comfort. The food simply be here, and to be here. Besides, if we were all coming and going three times a day, we'd surely attract the wrong kind of attention. And tax what you can't see now. I want some corn. Conway would love some corn. Marge. Evening, Marge. Marge is an avid collector of vinyl records. She borrowed quick cash from a distillery employee for rare king moves and quite a find. Okay. Pamela. This is Pamela. On her friend's 40th birthday, she pur purchased a quarter cask of hard times ce to celebrate. Unfortunately, her check was misplaced on after under the delivery driver's seat for a few months and was cashed at an inappropriate, inopportune moment. Naturally, the biggest check first police incurred significantly elevated overdraft fees and interest. This is agreeing to front plans bill in exchange for a promise of work. I don't think that's legal. Vincent. Looking sharp, Vincent. An avid boatsman miscalculated while cabrewing down the Echo one afternoon. Damaged to Silver's old water pump. Having depleted his modest funds on canoe full of craft fears, only option was to pay down the damages for working up for us here. He Heather. I knew a Heather once. Heather comes to us from the field of psychotherapy. She used to hit the bar as bluff seam after emotionally draining client sessions, but the remedy outpaced the disease and her tab went to the distillery. Okay. Thanks, bye. I will be leaving. How the hell do I get out of here? Ducks. Ducks. My water pump. Well, to make bourbon, you need some water, won't you? Your call comes in. The mundanity of it all. Quite impressive chorus when they all get going like this, though. Awfully loud, aren't they? Yes. It runs clean here, but forcefully. We have to use quite heavy equipment just to drop in it. The Echo River is fed from Lake Leth. You wouldn't recognize a drop of it. Leth's cold, dark, and so very deep. And still. Rumors of Lake Lee's supernatural properties are well... a bit exaggerated, but I wouldn't fish on it.
It sure is water. Pumps. The boondocks. I'm a master driver milling. Wrist mill. Mill. It's an antique. Perfectly functional. We recuperated from a site upriver out decades ago. It keeps us honest in our old world 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 charm, if you follow. We do as much upkeep as the formula allows. The water wheel is twenty feet up. Give us more clearance for a big hopper. When we pulled it out of the water at the old site, the wheel just kept spinning and it hasn't stopped yet. Because it doesn't need the need the river to turn it turn after all. That's weird. I like it. Lumber yard. Those are a lot of coffins. It's a good place to get lumber, I guess. He's a charring yard. Vents pretty well, considering. The smell. This is what they call. This is why they call bourbon a comfort food. Those are empty, right? What? Oh, of course. We don't really exhume them anymore. We chopped that source years ago. That's weird. You're weird. We build every cask by hand, right here. It's tradition, but I like to think our application of hands and hammers to the oak gives us stuff like kind of life. Well, that's what I like to think. They look like coffins? That is tradition too, I suppose. And I'm sure it helps avert suspicion of satellite catches us bearing them upstairs. Sure. Hey, Carla. You still here, Carla? I thought your shift was over hours ago. Carla joined us as a contractor, upgrading the agent racks in the warehouse. You can't just empty the warehouse to replace the wood all at once, so she's reconstructing the lattice work locks up with our aging schedule. She does a little expert carpentry for us here and there, just to cover the fees. Keeping ahead of your self-employment taxes at least, right? Carla, something that's all we can do. This place is dumb. I guess I can't look over there. So many places and things. Aging. I guess I do have to go everywhere, huh? Warehouse. Feel that draft of warmth. It's like a summer breeze. This is the aging warehouse. How many casks we got in there? Aging in there. Couldn't say exactly. Look at the inventory la later report if you like. Plenty, though. Of course, we still have half of our aging stock in here at any given time. The Australians let their whiskey sit in casks through the cycle of seasons. In summer, the wood expands and the whiskey seeps in, picking up flavor. In winter, the wood contracts and squeezes the whiskey back out. Down here, there are no seasons. Each workday proceeds from the last in an unbroken chain of climate control. So we make our own seasons. Each cask alternates in a weekly cycle between the cold ground upstairs and this heated warehouse. I guess I don't get to talk to that guy. You're bad at driving. Good old three point turn. That was magnificent. Kappa. 
This is where most of our staff ends up. Pretty modern equipment. Oh, absolutely. Top of the line machinery. A drastic, a dramatic improvement. We used to bottle everything by hand, but these machines are marvelously effective. Made things a bit complicated for the workers, after all. They certainly can't just fire them. How could they then with this out of their accounts? But there's nowhere else to put them. They keep an eye on things here. Can't be paid as much just to watch, of course. That's progress for you. Yeah. I suppose so. What? Go. Fine. I mean, maybe I do have to go that way. Oh, it's a delivery truck. But there's nothing here. Weird. Okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, ran right into all those bottles. Tragedy strikes. Distillation. Ah, fuck it. Yeah, I'm sure there's something. Computers. Please don't touch a thing. Very sensitive devices. We're not even allowed to run the formula through them. We have some computer issues of our own. Computers, computers. Personally, I'm composed on principle. Am I boring you yet? You're simply dying of boredom. I myself could, could discuss this matter past sunrise. We're trying to fix the old computer in the caves. Of course, I'm boring you. Let's go. Let's let's move on. God damn it. Hey, Ted. How's it looking, Ted? Get that new fan installed. Ted met one of our engineers at a bar years ago, and they just clicked. Our engineer told him about the equipment, trouble with equipment, and he felt compelled to take a crack at it. Ted's been obsessively tuning, replacing, and upgrading out ever since. Quite a project, Ted. You'll get ahead of it one day, I'm sure. Danny. How goes the mystery, Danny? Danny's an enigma. He leases an old van from our fleet for some kind of daily art project. He drives out every morning and comes back by evening smelling of propellants. Can't afford the lease in cash, so he pays us to work here. Hey, look. A thing. More of these old computers. Looks like the same vintage as the stuff in the cave. What's this little screen for? Oh, wow. Good eye. This is an XY monitor. It's... It's... They use them in oscilloscope in arcade games. Or they used to, anyway. It's rare stuff. Hey, this looks like antiquing with Lizette for you. Haha. <laughs> Probably sounds kind of ridiculous, waxing on about vacuum tubes and oscilloscopes. Uh, I don't think I can talk anything like that. I bet you could. Someday you'll bend over my ear about whatever. Yeah. Proud. I like these two. They have good chemistry. Crack a pow. Man, we almost got something. It's hard to get something. At least. Spirit safe. Connie. Connie, how's your rat?
Connie is a great lover of animals. Do you know she's adopted over a dozen pets as many times in the last years? Of course, death comes all to things great and small. Distillery found that the remains of in her makeshift pet cemetery are just hanging out. Our hand is forced. In order to avoid legal extinguishment of our easement, we were required to file a civil suit. Ever, ever the level head, Connie agreed to pre court settlement to pay off her fines by working for us here. Oh. That's good. Don't let them catch you looking too closely here, not within our purview. What's it for? Keeps us honest in the eyes of the state. Well, in the eyes of the management, anyway. We keep pretty well out of, the, out of view down here. Not much chance of being spotted by a helicopter. Hey, But if the law came knocking, we should, we could say we were logging and securing our virgin spirits. We could say. Marvelous engineering, though, isn't it? Sure. I don't understand. Sure. Yep, three point turn. Eh. Shipping. Hey, truck. All right, final look, you truck. Truck bow. Here it is. Now I have to ask. As a matter of course. What kind of experience do you have driving trucks? I drove deliveries for an antique shop until this last run. Aha, precious cargo. You'll do just fine. And you can drive safely, can't you? I have any doubt. It's only after what happened with Miguel this evening. I've been driving what happened with Miguel this evening. Well, with the dust still in the clearing, of course. Uh, perhaps he closed his eyes for a moment. Excuse me. Or simply a uh, curb too devilish. I do pity ill-fated Miguel. He was good company and slow to anger. But if we were speaking confidentially, well, with all that last lost product to be repaired, bourbon and glass dashed across the interstate, and a few casks too, we're all just thankful he had no next of kin. So let's see if we can ring up the distractor. Yeah. You just literally walked into the built into the truck. CB radio, a deep, monotonous voice drones on the dashboard speaker. Up in the Hummingbird Cave, 1012, City Kitty. This is a good time, dispatch. We may have found Miguel's replacement. Thought you might like to get acquainted. 109, come again. Pleased to meet you, uh. You dispatched something impressive about yourself. They're very well regar regarded here. You folks know anything about a moldy old computer? 99 wheel holder. Gotta pay the wire water bill. Ah, so. I'm certain they'll come back, call back before long. Let's take a look around the truck, eh? Headlights. Headlight works fine, see? Kaboom. That's important. Most of our product goes out at night. You'll never know who to run out to in the daylight, and dust can be treacherously misleading with all that indirect light. Magic hour, huh? Ever sleep in the day, then? Sure. Those that sleep. Miguel pulled extra day shifts when he could. Sometimes he'd help me, you know? Sometimes over in bottling. You shouldn't have been driving at dusk. Weird shadows. Soft light. Dangerous. Huh. Oh, I'm remembering something. Conway had to get off the highway. Too loud, too murky. He turned off into some gray cornfield in Indiana. You watch traffic and birds. Seeing those migrations close up, they looked random. You thought about the loads in the trailer. Thousands of plastic cups. Somebody wanted these cups in Rockford that night. It wasn't going to happen. He was only human. He'd been out since the headlights were on. Didn't even stop for coffee. 
He'd cracked a beer at three, eyes on the road, half past four. He dodged the stray cattle. Headlights were coming back on. Rockford could wait. Early morning wouldn't be much worse than the late night. How could they care? He just needed a few hours. So, moving on. Taz. Oh, sure, I know you want to look. Kick the tires. That's the thing we do, isn't it? As though our knees could exert the kind of force these tires could see out there on the road. More like it hurt ourselves, isn't that? Isn't it the way, the way, eh? Sure, they're big machines, but they can be fragile. Absolutely. A truck deserves care and careful respect, like a glass elephant. Miguel was a good driver, but he didn't have that quality of deference. What kind of man was Miguel? Conway sat in a dim room full of folding chairs. The walls and ceiling were painted with old smoke. Someone read from the book. He drank coffee, as is. He listened. The speaker listened to all the things we tried, that we... Most people in the room were probably there by court order. A few others shared. They spoke abstractions like, A program of action. A good orderly direction. Spiritual, but not religious. Religious, but not spiritual. All things we tried. Then it was over. They clasped steady hands through a short prayer and stepped out into the morning. He started walking. He was always walking these days. It was good to slow down. He felt clarifying, like walking me meditation. The road ran by a creek for a while. He took an unforeseen detour where the creek and the road parted. Following the edge of the water, he skipped a few stones, alone, then stopped to consider an overturned boat. It was a kind of serenity, that wandering and looking without purpose. He was coming to rely on those moments. Now what else can we show you? Wipers. Control the wipers with the snob here. Seem to have a decent amount of torque in them, huh? We can't say how they'd fare on an ice storm, but we never delay a shipment. Better we assume the risk. Always clear skies down here. So I hear. But the most of our park is delivered by surface roads, which feel which feel rain quite often, particularly in the spring months, so I hear. They ditched class for the day to drive in the rain. It was pointless to say, all review, he was a lost cause, and she didn't need it anyway. He was smart, she was smart, bored, it was time to cut out. She did a day for it though, 83 in biblical flood. They went to see a movie. It was some anonymous swashbuckler film about real men and women, real tights, real lips, fake blood. We bought a flask. They smoked cigarettes, drank awful hooch, whistled buckets, whistled buckets of rain. They sang about someone she wanted once to have loved. Brown hair curled around her ear. She had a voice like scotch whiskey. It was time to go. Stiff drinks were wearing on him. He felt a surge of dejection. He knew she'd be she'd keep singing. He thought she could should sing for somebody who deserved to hear it. He knew he'd find a ride, she'd find a ride, so he slipped out alone. Uh, that's dick move. He sat in his car and went over some options. Chicago, Toronto, Barrow? It seemed like a bold and impulsive gesture at the time. As he pulled out the parking lot, he removed his hands from the steering wheel for a moment and felt that the car drift into a decision. Years later, he'd think of this moment as himself as he started drifting. That's dangerous, Conway, come on. Hmm, you have an interesting past. Looks like it's just about ready to go out. So we have to worry... We have some good strong folks in shipping here, so you never need to worry about loading it if you don't want to. Get our knees in the back at our age, eh? Of course, you'll have to unload it at the destination, but that's the job. And some drivers like the extra shift stacking and loading here. I shouldn't really be doing any lifting these days. Well, I see. Surely we can spare a dolly and carrying strap for your health and safety. Conway bit, woke up on bailed hay. Everything was too bright. His head hurt. The usual. Lizette and Ira argued loudly just outside the open barn door. She wanted Ira to take him inside and shower, have some coffee, get to, get to the job. Ira said there wasn't time. Conway was in no condition. It was an important job. They couldn't p put it off. Ira said to let the deadline sleep it off and, and send him packing. They'd be... He said Charlie would do the job. Conway closed his eyes. They kept arguing. Lizette tried saying Charlie had a schoolwork, that Conway could be roused. Ira said Charlie could, should earn his bed for the summer. Conway was a lost cause. Couldn't show up to a job bleary-eyed and smelling like booze. Ira was a stubborn man, so Charlie went along. When Conway drifted out again, he didn't hear about the accident until months later. Hmm. Background info. 
The truck's radio crackles back to life. Driver, come back. Ah, there's dispatch. Now tell them about your experience. Tell them the truck's in good shape. Tell them that you'll start in the morning. I really can't. Yeah, we've got to finish this delivery in a few... 1033, dispatch. We've got two black eyes and a flock of crocodiles. Come back. 104, come back and prick your eyelids, driver. Back it down and prick your eyelids, driver. Come back, Lem. 104. Come back, wheel holder. Dispatch is addressing addressing you. He's here, dispatch. Got your ears on? Good. Listen to this. So, I think that went well. Let's head up to the logistics and seal the deal, eh? We got one more thing to show you. <laughs> this won't take no for an answer. Kaboo. Let's go park. Let's go pork. Get. You can do it. <laughs> Come on. You can you can get over there. You no. Oh good. This is this is beautiful driving. This is just perfect. All right, fine. I'll guide you there manually. Come on. Back up. Alright, go forward. Turn around. Go to the park. There you go. You're the best driver. Nope, oh, nope. You gotta back. Oh, okay. It's not backed in. Yeah, you gotta back in. Can't do this like a baby. Nope, nope, back in. We can do this. I believe in us. That'll do. Flawless. Just perfect. Let's head back upstairs. Wait, we we only came here looking for some answers about this stupid moldy computer. Oh, the old man in the cave with the moldy computer. The black mold is drawn to whiskey. It feeds on alcohol fumes, ethanol fumes here. We age the whiskey, some of it inevitably evaporates into the air. The angels share. It goes through the vents here and out into the caves. If you can if we can scrap up the mold, we can usually apply some pressure and cold to it. Squeeze condense the angels share back into drinkable whiskey. Every drop counts when you're making a living on the stuff, so we go down and scrape it off as equipment, just like any other place it grows. He kept sending his people here to drive us away. Paranoid, truly paranoid. Well, something since we stopped going down there, I'm sure the mold's gotten run pretty thick. Try cleaning off with the timing crystal. That'll get you going, I'm sure of it. Hey, I was right. Going upstairs. No. I like how it took that long to just get and talk about it. Can we go now? Yeah, we'll get, we'll go over here. Maybe over there. If you don't mind. Nah, uh, I mind. Miss those hats. Here it is. A beauty, wouldn't you say? It's an antique, you know. What is it? Why, it's an adding machine. This is where we come for a daily ritual to calculate the day's interest and repayment according to the formula. I usually do so at the beginning of my shift, so I know how many hours I need in order to keep up. 
Yes, I believe you'll do well, sir. Happy to have you. Congratulations. You're hired. Wait, we we can't. It's customary to start each day with a shift drink. Let's make a special. Mark the occasion. This is a top shelf stuff now. Single barrel. He doesn't. Down the hatch. Minum minority Morris. Uh oh. Hey, Ezra and people are there. My hand is. I can't move my mouse. It's actually moving to the drink itself. Don't do it. Don't do it. Shit, he drank it. God damn it. They didn't animate it. Decent enough. Welcome aboard. He's not working for you. We have to get back to this. Our, he has a delivery to make. What's this? Not working. Are you turning down this opportunity? She's right. I have to make this. Uh, I'm disappointed. And I'm afraid that leaves us with a delicate problem. As I indicated, this is the top shelf stuff you're drinking now. It isn't cheap. It's, if it's not your first shift drink, well, then there's a matter of this tour just now. My time and experience are built at a, quite a premium. It's not good for you, my friend. We're in quite deep by the back of my envelope uh, estimations. We'll have it in common, I suppose, all of us. I'm fainting. Yes, I'm afraid I'll have to work this off somehow. It's just the way of it. What's happening right now? You can start tomorrow. Take the time to settle your affairs, of course. The interest go begins to compound immediately, and, well, we'll go over the formula when you're here. I should get back to work. See you tomorrow, then. Shit. Well. So, I guess I start in the morning. I guess. I'm confused. It's just the way things go, kid. Ah, well, that still gives us a few hours to roam, right? Where's that ferry? I guess there's a ferry. So that's what happened. What the fuck is that thing? Oh. Neat. I think that's the end. Maybe. Yep. Alright. Cool. Neat. That was... That was Kentucky Route Zero, Episode Three, Act 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 Three, Act Three, Act Three. So that happened. Cool. I need to drink some water because I'm really frickin' thirsty. Holy shit! So uh, I'm done. That was that was the stream. Hope you enjoyed it. That is the intermission screen. I gotta be right back, but I'm also stopping. So thanks you for stopping by, people. I'm really thirsty. Yeah.